Hey everybody, I'm John Hallback, and I am super excited today to be talking to one of Queerty's Pride 50 honorees this year, the writer and director, Tim Fetterly. Hey Tim, happy Pride. Thank you, John. Happy Pride. Great to be here. First of all, I wanted to say congratulations on adapting your book, Better Nate Than Ever, into a film for Disney+. Plus. I loved it so much. When you wrote the book, did you ever imagine that it would get a big screen adaptation like this? And how did the movie come to be? I did not imagine that it would get a big screen adaptation. I um I wrote the book from a really autobiographical point of view. I'm a I'm a grown up theater kid from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who uh, really wanted to get to New York City and and dance on Broadway. And so the book that I wrote is very much about that kind of kid who is you know chosen last for dodgeball and 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 dreams of a of, of a bigger, more accepting world out there. And then sort of all these years later, I, I created High School Musical for Disney Plus, the series. And uh, and there was a gay executive in the movie division who read the book and was a fan of the book and brought it to me and said, I think we should make this a movie. And and it was a it, I, it wasn't even a dream come true because I did not dream that big. But it was an absolute it was an honor to, to tell the story. I wanted to ask you about one of my favorite moments in the film when Nate is asked if he has a monologue and he then proceeds to perfectly perform Julia Sugarbaker's iconic And That Was the Night That the Lights Went Out in Georgia speech. Yeah. I was wondering, do you remember when you first saw that episode of Designing Women? What's your history with this moment? And what gave you the idea to include it in Nate's story? I mean, I was such a like prototypical Designing Women and Golden Girls super fan growing up. There was like such a safety with those women and also such a kind of unapologetic fabulousness to all of them even before I knew what my sort of attraction to, to, to them was. And there was something about it that felt so campy and so instantly identifiable to a certain audience that I thought was a really fun thing for a 13 year old boy from the Midwest to say, because I don't think he even quite realizes, you know, what this speech means to the larger community. Uh, one of my other favorite parts about the movie is the casting of Lisa Kudrow as the very relatable actor slash cater waiter. I was just wondering uh, what gave you the idea to cast her and what was it like working with her? I just think Lisa has such depth as a comedic actress and she brings such pain and truth to everything. So I basically wrote her a fan letter and said, you don't know who I am. Uh, and I bet you've never seen High School Musical, the series on Disney Plus, but I've got this role that I truly believe you were born to play. Give me a shot. She read the script. We zoomed and uh, and she she got it. And I think she was really interested in being part of, frankly, the first ever sort of gay Disney protagonist at the center of a story like this that was moving to her. And I think she saw the importance of that. And uh, I mean, what was it like to work with her? It's like, never meet your heroes unless they're Lisa Kudrow. She's so approachable, so funny, so easy, and just uh, the, the dream. She's the dream. Between Better Nate Than Ever and High School Musical, you've been given such a unique opportunity to tell stories about young LGBTQ people to such a huge family audience. And I was just wondering, how does that feel? And do you have a sort of personal philosophy as to how you approach that? Uh, I mean, it feels it feels great. I think there's something bold about saying, you know, we, we are members of your family. And so it's very powerful to tell a story that's unapologetic and I think celebratory of the queer experience, which can be so musical and optimistic and snarky and beautiful. Any final pride wishes for everyone out there? I guess my final pride wish is, um, you know, a lot of us have been inside for a long time because of COVID. And then others of us have been inside a long time because of the closet. And however you want to celebrate pride at whatever timeline you're comfortable with, that's okay. Just know that, you know, when you're ready, there is a world of people who have been in your shoes before who are, you know, ready to welcome you to the party. And, uh, and uh, you're, you're beautiful, whoever you are, and, and, and the right people will see that. 